court desk all the cases of the people versus blue. Your Honor, um, just for the record, I need to make a record. I'm very thankful that Your Honor gave me a few minutes to speak with my client. My client informs me he has not heard most of, of what's going on here. I respectfully ask that I ask the court to adjourn these matters so he can be present in the court. For the record. I don't need a response, Ms. Reiser. Um, I will just indicate I have stated my reasons why he's not being permitted in the court. Um, he has heard the proceedings. To the extent he has not heard the proceedings, it may be because of his behavior in the jail. That is not anybody's fault. And so I am not adjourning these proceedings. Uh, Your Honor, I know you made your decision, but just, just to clarify a little bit, he's claiming that the person in the next cell or room is just con continually screaming for what that's worth. That may be his own voice he's hearing. Okay. But the deputies had indicated that this proceeding could be heard by Mr. Blow. And so I believe that to be the case. And so we will continue. Any other things for the record, Mr. Killebold? No, that well covers it. Okay, real good. All right, Mr. Reiser, call your next witness. Alex, A-L-E-X, Goldsby, H-I-L-L-I-P-S. You may inquire. Thank you, sir. Can you tell the appropriate to say your employee? Do you want my officer's office? And in what capacity? Our patrol deputy. And were you working on August 21st, 2022 in your capacity as a board patrol deputy? I was. And were you dispatched to... Is it Bosnes? Oh, Bosnes. Bosnes Way, apartment A-1? I was. And what time did you receive that dispatch? 2259 hours. Is that 1059 p.m.? Yes, ma'am. What was the nature of the dispatch? Uh, I was initially called in and then called. Delayed a little bit. Suspect not no longer on scene. And who, if anyone, did you make contact with when you got to the scene? Tiffany Blaisdell and Marshall Brown. And um, did you speak with both of them about what had occurred? I did. Okay. And what was Ms. Um, Blaisdell's demeanor? Uh, horrified, frantic, uh, very emotional. As she described what happened? Yeah. Okay. And did you see any injuries on or about her person? Yeah, she had several. Okay. And could you describe those with her for us? Uh, she had a lot of swelling in the cheekbones on both sides of her face. Uh, I believe the left side of her face had a large fist-shaped bruise. Uh, and based on your information that you obtained from Mr. Marshall and Ms. Blaisdell, had the assault just occurred or was there a delay in the report? There was a delay. Okay. And what, approximately what time, based on your investigation? Uh, approximately 0, 0500 hours on the morning, so approximately 1700. That evening. And was the suspect on scene? No. Okay. And did you have information about who the suspect was? Yes, yeah, she positive. Your Honor, that's a hearsay statement. I don't believe the identity <clears throat> of the suspect is hearsay. Yeah, it's coming from the victim. I understand that, but that would go to his state of mind as to what may be his next action. So I'm overruling the objection. Did you have information on the identity of the suspect? I did. And who was that? Jeffrey Wayne Bloom. And he was not on scene? Correct. And were you able to um, locate him that evening or the next morning hours of your shift? I was not. My partners were. Okay. And did you provide um, that information at briefing or to any of the police officers? I should have covered briefing, yes. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. <laughs> Cross examination. Uh, just a couple questions, Your Honor. Officer Phillips, when you went there on the 21st, you discussed, you, you, you spoke with um, Ms. Blaisdell, correct? Yes. And you were one of the officers that took her aside, correct? Yes. And, and, and based on what she said, you wrote a report, correct? Correct. And I would like to show you. And you, you followed up with a supplemental report also, correct? I did. I did. 
Uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I, I, may I approach your honor witness? Yes, you may. Right. Officer, uh, these are just partial pages of, of, of your initial report and supplemental report, specifically this paragraph and then this paragraph. And it's my understanding each time you spoke with Ms. Blaisdell, correct? Yes. And is it fair to say she indicated how Marshall's interact on your initial report? Um, she indicated that she witnessed that uh, that assault on Marshall. I believe so. Yes. Is that what your report initial report says? Where I showed you on the last lines there. Yes. Okay. And th and then you were asked to go back three days later for a supplemental report, correct? Correct. And you also discussed. The incident with with Miss Blaisdell, correct? Correct. And and then did what if based what if anything based on your knowledge? Let me back up. You wrote a supplemental report, correct? Yes. And that supple, supplemental report, there's a page there. Would you read that one just to yourself? That paragraph on the supplemental report. With her. With her. Yes, please. Yes. Okay. And based on your based on what you're reading, was there a discrepancy whether or not she witnessed the incident? Yes. In fact, was it, is your supplemental report, is it your belief that she did not witness the assault of Marshall, correct? I'm going to object to whatever this officer's belief is. I mean, he can testify to. Okay. Did, did, she, did she tell you that she witnessed the incident at first and then the supplemental report she didn't witness the, the assault on Marshall? I'm sorry, I don't mean to confuse you. You you spoke with Tiffany I did, initially. I'm trying to phrase for that police report, the initial police report, she claimed she Marshall was defending her. And that's how Marshall got her in, got his injuries. And it, three days later, you were asked to go back mm -hmm. and write a supplemental report. And my belief you spoke with Tiffany. And at that time. For that police report that you wrote, she stated that she did not witness the assault on Marshall. Fair? Yes. For the police report. Correct. All right, thank you. I have uh, no further questions. Yeah. Any redirect? Excuse me. Did you, um, Deputy Phillips, actually see the injury to Marshall's penis? I did. And, and that was photographed and admitted as Exhibit 10. Correct. And your information from your investigation is the defendant Jeffrey Bloom caused that injury to Marshall's penis. Correct. No other questions. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right, you may step down. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Call you yeah, no further witnesses, Your Honor. All right. We would move for bind over your under on the felony counts contained within the information. I believe that the testimony of Tiffany Blaisdell does support um, bind over on count one that the defendant Jeffrey Bloom did engage in sexual penetration with Tiffany Blaisdell under circumstances involving the commission of another felony to wit the strangulation. Marshall Brown's testimony um, that we heard earlier in September does um, support uh, bind over on count two that uh, Jeffrey Wayne Bloom did engage in sexual contact with another person, uh, Marsha Brown, causing personal injury to Mr. Brown and using force or coercion to accomplish the sexual act. Um, Mr. Brown described in detail the assault um, on himself, how he was humiliated by it, and the injury um, was documented um, to his penis. So I believe that that supports uh, by Brown count two. Count three is a lesser included of count one, the criminal sexual conduct uh, during the commission of a felony that the defendant did engage in penetration with Tiffany Blaisdell using force or coercion to accomplish the sexual penetration. If the jury were to find that the penetration did not occur during the course of a felony, I would be asking that they commit, uh, that they would convict on count three that he engaged in sexual penetration with Tiffany Blaisdell using force or coercion. Furthermore, uh, Tiffany Blaisdell's um, testimony supports a count for that he made an assault upon Tiffany Blaisdell by strangulation or suffocation. Uh, her testimony supported that today, uh, that he was 
um, actually, um, as I'm arguing this, Bino Remina actually asked that the language be included because he was punching her about the face. So that should actually be. This is the GBH. Yeah. So it only reads um, by strangulation, and it should be. That the defendant did make an assault upon Tiffany Blaisdell with the intent to do great bodily harm, less than the crime of murder, and or by strangulation or suffocation. So I would amend count four to read um, that with the intent to do great bodily harm, less than the crime of murder, and or by strangulation or suffocation. Very understood. And likewise, the, the language on count one, the criminal sexual conduct during the felony would be uh, during the felony to with um, assault with intent to do great bodily harm, less than murder, or by strangulation. Understood. <clears throat> and I believe uh, Marshall Brown's um, testimony also supports um, a find over on count five. Um, he was really specific in his testimony about how the defendant was strangling him. Um, and how he had a raspy voice after that. Unlawful imprisonment for counts six and seven, I believe that both the testimony of Tiffany Blaisdell and Marshall Brown, um, that they could not leave. They believed it was a real gun that the defendant possessed and they um, were restrained in the apartment and could not leave the apartment. So I believe for probable cause purposes, there is sufficient testimony from both of them to support a binder on count six and seven. I would be moving to add count eight, an additional count of criminal sexual conduct in the first degree. Ms. Blaisdell described two penetrations, uh, penis to vagina, and then the forced oral penetration where the defendant was hitting her and putting his penis into her mouth. So there is an additional count eight of CSC during a felony um, for the second penetration on Ms. Blaisdell in count nine, the second penetration using force or coercion would be a CSC third that engaged in sexual penetration with Tiffany Blaisdell using force or coercion. So count one would be the vaginal penetration, count three is the vaginal penetration, count eight and nine are the penis to mouth penetration. Gotcha. Got and we would ask that the matter be bound over to circuit court. I'm sorry, can you explain count nine again? I'm trying to write this down. Sure. Yeah. Count one is CSC no, one. No, I count, count nine. Count nine is basically count three with the oral penetration. Right. So count nine is a CSC third force of coercion, penis to mouth. Your Honor, um, yes. at the problem Respond. with cause standard, uh, I, I, I will leave it at the court's discretion. The, the brief time I had to speak with my client, uh, he believed there was a lot of misinformation and frankly lies to it by the, uh, the victim in this matter. But for purposes of- I court, thought he couldn't hear. Pardon me? Nothing. Go ahead. No, no, it's true. It's true. He would hear parts of it, Jed. So oh, I want to make sure he could hear parts of it. Okay. But, but again, for purposes of at the low standard of probable cause, I believe this court would have it. Has enough for a bind over in this matter. Um, I don't necessarily agree with the counts, counts eight and nine, but Your Honor, I believe to the court's discretion. All right. The court, after listening to the testimony in this case and hearing the testimony of both Ms. Brown and Ms. Blaisdell, uh, the court does believe that people have sustained their burden of showing by probable cause the offenses. And as amended as it regards the underlying felony as to count one and count eight, um, as well as to count four with its amendment, um, with its amended language to include um, harm to the individual less than the crime of murder. The court does believe that the people have sustained their burden on each and every count, including the request uh, requested added counts of eight and nine of CSC one and CSC three, and therefore the defendant is bound over in this case to stand trial on all nine counts. Uh, Your Honor, for purposes of arraignment, uh, we waive the reading of the information. I can't stand you if you would ask for the defendant. Have waived formal reading as to all nine counts, standing mute. 
court will enter a not guilty plea as to those counts. Pre-trial will be set for November 17th at 1.30 with Judge O'Brien. November 17th, 2022, 1.30, Judge O'Brien. In that case, the defendant's bond will continue as denied. And I will present um, a new felony information to counsel and to the court prior to the pre-trial Very good. All right, are we ready on the next matter? Yes, sir. Specifically, the court does call the case of People versus Jeffrey Wayne Bloom, 22 FB 1276. Good evening, Your Honor. Any advisor being on behalf of the people? Um, hold on, one moment. I lost it. Jeffrey, hold it. The jail's off. They need to log back in. They thought we might be done. Yeah, they may not have. You let them know. There's no one there. He's at the yes, sir. How do I ask? I don't know. The judge isn't there. I don't see anybody. Your turn to ask. Uh, hello? hello, maybe seated. Hello, the court. Can you you? The court has called the case of uh, the people versus Jeffrey Brillon, that being case 22 FB. One, two, seven, six. Council, state your appearances. Amy Rice, on behalf of the people. Uh, good evening, Your Honor. Robert G. Poole, on behalf of Jeffrey Bloom. And Your Honor, just for the record, I would like to incorporate, incorporate all the objections I made of all my client at being here on case 22 FB 1278 FY into 22 FB 1276 FY, Your Honor. And the court will incorporate its rulings into that. And the defendant will remain where he is. Thank you, Your right. Honor. Mr. Reiser, this is a date time for preliminary examination. You may proceed. People have contacted me and trying to know about Your Honor, if the other deputy is also going to testify, I ask that you sequestered, Your Honor. Deputy um, Rob is the officer in charge, so he'll be seated to my left. All right. Then the yeah. officer in charge may remain in the room. Sorry. Oh, sorry. It's, right. it's late. Thank you, sir. Can you tell the corporate is sitting here for you? Uh, the Washington County Sheriff's Office. In what capacity? As a deputy sheriff. And were you working in your capacity as a deputy sheriff on August 22nd, 2022? I was. And were you dispatched to Rosenus? Okay. Rosen's Way, apartment A1. Yes. And is that located in Ypsilanti Township, Washington County? Yes. And approximately what time did you receive the dispatch? Uh, approximately 6.30. And what was the nature of the dispatch? Uh, I can't recall exactly how many calls it was, but I know there was at least one call for uh, subject on the porch of that address saying that we were looking for him. And um, did you have an identity of the suspect when you responded that you were looking for? Yes, we were looking for Jeffrey. Okay. And did you have information about Mr. Bloom? Uh, during the briefing for the day, the night shift that was coming off advised that they had established probable cause for arrest for Jeffrey Bloom for kidnapping, criminal sexual conduct first, criminal sexual conduct second. And are you familiar with what Mr. Bloom looks like? Yes. And can you tell the court um, how you were dressed when you proceeded to the scene? I was dressed just like I am today in my full uh, class B uniform. Okay. And were you driving a police vehicle? I was driving a marked police vehicle. Yes. With lights? Lights and fire. Yes. And what happened when you arrived at 502 by Boston's Way? Uh, I angled my patrol vehicle towards the porch of Apartment 81. Uh, I could see two subjects sitting on the porch. 
I activated my lights, which activated my body camera and our video. I started approaching and I noticed uh, uh, one subject sitting there who we later identified as Marshall. I did not have contact with him prior. Uh, and next to him was Jeffrey. Do you recognize Jeffrey? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And did you um, give him any orders or commands? Yes. What did you do or say? I told him to stand up. I told him that he was under arrest. And I told him to come to us. And did he follow those commands? He did stand up. He would not come to us. Okay. And when you say us, was there another officer on the scene with you? I had that big route. And is he in police uniform? He was. And so how many times did you tell Mr. Bloom to come to us? I can't recall exactly. It was several. Okay. And did he ever do that? No. What did he do? He stayed on the porch where he was. And what did you do? Uh, I continued to advance towards Jeff. Uh, Deputy Rao also did that. As we got closer to him, Jeff took an offensive stance put his right arm behind his back and started reaching for his waistband. That typically the type of stance where somebody's reaching for a weapon. Um, and then he would instigate the situation, inching his arm towards us and saying, watch this, watch this. Did you believe that he may have a weapon? I did. Way? So what did you do? I drew my fire and I pointed it at him. I continued to give him verbal commands. And did he follow those commands? He did not. And what happened next? Uh, Deputy Rob deployed his taser, which struck Jeffrey, Jeffrey, immobilized him, and we took him to custody. Thank you, sir. I don't have any other questions for you at this time. Um, Cross examination. Uh, just very briefly, uh, Officer, um, you wrote a report in this matter, correct? Correct. And in your report, it says that. Um, I also know Jeffrey to often confront police and be in possession of deadly weapons. Yes. Is that your statement? Yes. Is that your, your police report? That's from my own personal knowledge of Jeffrey. And, and what what deadly weapons have you known in the past that he had? Uh, I know several instances where he's been in possession of knives and he's had contact with the police. And, and is that and no, no guns? I can't recall any specific instance of guns other than the one uh, that was described to me during briefing, which they said he was in possession of a real looking right, gun, which turned out to be a beautiful camera. Right. And, and, and how many, and you said you know from having knives, and how many occasions would, would that have been? I can't recall exactly, it's been at least two. Two, okay. And, um, and you're saying that you were giving him commands and he was continuing to approach you? He did not approach. He stood up and stood up before he took an offensive stance. Did he say anything to you? Uh, he was saying, watch this, watch this, as he was at the stand behind his back towards me. Okay, and you took, obviously you took that as a threat? I did. Okay, and um, where was Deputy Rob in relationship to you? Deputy Rob was off to my right hand side. And was it fair to say you were in close proximity to each other? Yes, I can't say exactly how far away he was, but we were close. Was any of that me late to the point where you closer to Jeffrey than Officer Rob? I'd say we were uh, pretty close to the same distance. It, it was it light out, dark out? Uh, it was still light out. So it's usually uh, when, and the taser, what color is the taser? The taser is yellow, the, the body of the taser. Okay, yeah, so. Okay. And and you were aware that it was pulled out at some point by Deputy Rob? Yes. And did Jeff react at any point? I know you had your gun pointed at him. Did, did he say anything once the, the taser was pulled out? I believe he did. I don't recall exactly what it was he said. You think it was a threat? I can't recall. I can't say for sure. Okay. And at some point, you tased her, correct? I did not. I, I mean, Deputy Rob did that. Did that. And, and how many times was it? Was it I know he was tasered once, but it, are there barbs there? There are two taser probes that come out per the uh, Deputy Rob was charged one taser cartridge. So two probes fired, and two probes made contact with Jeffrey, which can mobilize them. And those probes went through, and what was Jeffrey wearing at the time? 
from my recollection, it was a t shirt and jeans. The probes after Jeffrey fell to the ground came out of his body. And, and, and can you just tell if, where, if you remember, recall, where was he hit with the probes? To the best of my recollection, one was in the leg and one was in the torso area. And, and as a result, he fell? Yes, he fell. Was there any more resistance after that? Yes, there was. And what resistance followed that? Uh, we had to muscle Jeffrey's arm behind his back to put handcuffs on. And were the tasers still in him or were the tasers taken? Are the barbs, the probes taken out first? I can't say for certain at what point the probes came out. All I know is that once we got Jeffrey up after he was in cuffs, the barbs had fallen off. Okay. And and I'm assuming once he was in cuffs, the uh, no more problems with them? That's correct. And, and just one last one. Did he appear intoxicated? I can't say for sure. Or under the influence, or did he model anything? Or I don't know. Okay, thank you. I have no further questions. Let me redirect. Oh, yeah. All right, thank you. Dick. You may step down. The people will call Deputy Thomas Rapp. Sir, please come forward and be sworn. Okay, you may inquire. Deputy Rapp, can you tell the court where you're employed? Washington County Sheriff's Office. And in what capacity? Board Patrol Deputy. And were you working in that capacity on August 22nd of this year, 2022? I was. And were you dispatched to Ozen's Way, apartment A1? Yeah. And what was the nature of the dispatch? Uh, we were talking about as a report of a disorderly subject. It was also, I believe, the call screen also noted it was this is a follow up because that needs to get out at that residence uh, previously. And were you looking for anyone in particular that you arrived at the scene? Yes, we're looking for Jeffrey Ford. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. And uh, did you have a physical description or did you know what he was doing? Uh, I believe I had one prior contact with Mr. Bloom. Uh, and I also refreshed my memory with his Michigan Secretary of State driver's license photo. On your way to the scene? On the way to the scene. And tell us what happened um, when you arrived to the event. Uh, I was following uh, my own fully marked patrol vehicle uh, behind the no bus patrol vehicle. Uh, we both pulled into the complex uh, in front of the apartment. Uh, it's an open air patio to the apartment. Uh, when we pulled up, I exited my patrol car, saw two subjects on the patio. Uh, then he held up and I approached the patio, recognized one of the subjects to be Mr. Bloom. Um, Said the old one uh, to get uh, Mr. Bloom to uh, arrest and over to us. And did Mr. Bloom do that? Uh, he, he stood up uh, from his seat, I believe he was seated, and he stood up when he saw us arrive uh, and remain on the patio. Okay. And were you in your um, police uniforms? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And at some point during that encounter, did you give um, Mr. Bloom commands? I did. Uh, I let Deputy Hilma give the initial commands when we were approaching. Um, Mr. Bloom stood up, uh, took an aggressive stance toward the start of glaring uh, and grimacing, um, earning those expressions on his face. Uh, when he stood up, he put his right hand behind his back, reaching toward his waistband. Um, and since we acquired knowledge that he was only the arm, that as per the last call for service, then we're, we believe we had a firearm. <coughs> uh, we drew our uh, service weapons. I uh, told him to uh, remove his hand from behind his back that we were under arrest and uh, from what we missed. And did he do that? He did that. Okay. And did you specifically give him um, orders to remove his hand behind his back? I did. I told him numerous times to show us his hand. And did he do that? Yeah. And what happened? Uh, some other deputies from Ruffles arrived on the scene. They had their firearms out. Uh, so I holstered my firearms. Uh, armed it and planted it, Mr. Bloom. I uh, gave him three more commands um, with ample time for him to reply or respond. I told him to take his hands out from behind his back or out of the table. I told him that statement three times. Uh, he told him that to apply for those three chances for opportunities. 
that I gave a warning to the change the taser and deploy my taser. And what happened to Mr. Bloom? Uh, it appears that Katie Barnes struck Mr. Bloom um, and he fell on the ground, kind of sat on backwards. Okay. And were you able to um, place him under arrest at that time? Yes, we were. And did he resist any further? Uh, from what I recall, I uh, was trying to pull his arms in you know, towards his chest and uh, that he's had the muscle of pulling his arms back behind his back in order to get that supply. After um, Mr. Bloom was secured in custody, did you make contact with any of the residents? I went inside to check on the residents. Um, I spoke with Mr. Brown and also with Ms. Blaisdell. Okay. And what was Ms. Blaisdell's um, demeanor? Uh, she appeared very agitated um, and frightened. I can see the injuries on her face from the previous incident that were never in the deputy Phil's report. Uh, Ms. Blaisdell uh, stated that she sure, was on her You don't have to tell us. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. Thank you, Deputy Brown. Deputy Brown, just a couple of questions. Um, you, you ride uh, by yourself in your own vehicle? Correct. I was in my own vehicle, but I was driving by. Okay. And, um, and, and, and so was Deputy Phil Buck the first one to uh, uh, approach Mr. Bloom? Well, we, it was fairly simultaneous. Okay. We were both exited our patrol cars and walked over. And, and, and you said he took an aggressive, aggressive stance and he glanced and he sneered at you. Is that what you so said? Blared and grimaced like he had heard the same expression on his face, but he was not. It did not appear to be happy that we were making contact with him. But he didn't say it. I mean, other than that, he didn't say anything. Correct. Okay. And um, he was given command to pull his arm back, correct, off, off his back. Correct, to raise our arm our, our off Okay. And, and at some point, you said you you, you holstered your, your weapon and you pulled out a taser? Yes. And and did you say, I, I know what you said to, to Jeffrey, but was, how far away were you from Jeffrey when you tasered him? Uh, hard for me to say, but I had to guess 20 feet, maybe really? 25 feet. I, it's hard I didn't know taser about being there again. I didn't know the taser goes that far, but we, we had uh, newly issued tasers that have a great range. All right, and, and, and in your training for a taser, when you're going to taser somebody, is there a specific body part that you, you go for? Uh, just trying for a, pretty much not the heart area. Um, Preferred taser deployment is on somebody's back, but it's not always available due to obviously accident circumstances. Uh, so you're trying to get lower portion of the body so you don't hit sensitive areas like the face. Okay. And then once he was, the probes hit him, he fell. Correct. He kind of sat down backwards. Okay. And then it's your testimony further that, that he was giving the officers a hard time to handcuff him. Correct. Right. And did he, during that time, was he making any threats to anybody? I remember that he was saying something while we were trying to bring him to custody. I don't know what all exactly what he was And then once he was handcuffed, was there any other uh, uh, obstructing or not that I remember? Okay. Did, did you take him to the police station? Another deputy did. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just as you you approached them, I should back up a little bit, you did recognize Jeffrey as one of the people on the porch? I did. All right, thank you. I have no further questions. Any redirect? No, we Thank you, sir. You may step down. Thank you, Rob. Well, I'm sorry. I did um, forget to ask Deputy Rob. I do have a question. <laughs> um, you identified the um, defendant um, on the Zoom screen, the individual that you've seen on the Zoom screen. Yes. I believe he's there right at this moment. But yeah. Is that Jeffrey Bloom who you attempted to take into custody yet? Yes, sir. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. Any questions based upon that? No. Good. All right, thank you. Um, and just before you make your argument or your motion, uh, council should be aware that during uh, Deputy Hillebuck's testimony, um, the door was closed to the cell because, um, and I don't know if you saw it at the time, Mr. Bloom um, took toilet paper, threw it out, trying to strike the tablet so but he is there and listening if he chooses 
All right, go ahead, Ms. General, we're going to refer back over on um, the two felonies coming with the information. I believe that Deputy Rob and Deputy Hillebuck's testimony support a um, find over on an RNO that the defendant did assault, batter, wound, resist, obstruct, oppose, or endanger Deputy Thomas Rock, a police officer with the Washington County Sheriff's Office. The defendant had reason to know was performing his duties and that he did assault, batter, wound, resist, obstruct, oppose, or endanger. Uh, Deputy Hillebuck, Trevor Hillebuck, a police officer of the Washington County Sheriff's Office, that the defendant knew or had reason to know was performing his or her duties. Mr. Kellogg, yes. Based on the uh, probable cause standard, I'll leave it to the court's discretion. Uh, All right. And in this matter, the court having listened to the testimony, the court would find that the people have sustained their burden and of showing that the two counts of resisting and obstructing a police officer have been shown one involving uh, deputy hill above the other involving deputy rob yeah, and the court would bind a defendant over on counts one and two yes for purposes of arraignment your honor you waive its reading my client would stand we we ask for the november 17th pre-trial date defendant having way former reading standing mute the court will enter a not guilty plea yes sending it over to you now not, not guilty plea. Court will enter a not guilty plea. Pretrial will be set for November 17th at 1 November 17th, 2022, 1 30 before Judge O'Brien. Um, as to bond in this case, uh, if you have a Okay, I should have it on this one, but it's not there. Oh, yes. His bond in this is a $50,000 cash assurity. Bond will continue in this manner. All right, folks, thank you very much. Thank you, Nice sleep. All right, <laughs> you didn't get that far into the evening. All right, thank you, folks. Everybody have a good holiday and stay safe, please. 14A stands adjourned.